Hello and welcome to another in our series of lectures on methods of regression analysis. Today we're going to take a little diversion into using R to perform some matrix operations. You're pro you may be familiar with using MATLAB to do matrix operations. R has similar kind of functionality and when you're doing regression there's a lot that we do that uses matrix operations. Fam most famously would be how we compute our vector of regression coefficients in multiple linear regression, x prime x inverse, x prime y. You can see in this that s x y over s x x from simple linear regression. In fact, the example we're going to do is going to be a simple linear regression. Our interest here is just exploring the matrix algebra and the methods for doing so. So what do we have to do to compute our vector of coefficients, our slope and intercept in simple linear regression? that intercept term and the various coefficients shouldn't really be interpreted as slopes per se in multiple regression. We need to be able to take the transpose of a matrix, x prime. We need to be able to multiply x prime times x, x prime times y. We need to be able to take the inverse. So the solve function gives us the inverse of it. So if we take x prime x and put that into the solve function, we will get that inverse. Now we could compute those directly if we have our model matrix, which is a vector of ones and then the other regressor variables, and the y is our response variables. There's the formula to compute the vector of coefficients. We're going to take a little bit more time than that, but that basically is the answer we're going to look at. We're going to explore the old faithful data set. These are eruption times and durations for 272 eruption events of the Old Faithful Geyser in Yellowstone National Park. In order to do our calculation, we're going to have to put those uh, this uh, data frame, the faithful data frame, into some vectors. But first, let's just take a look at our data. We're modeling the duration of the eruptions as a function of the waiting time between the eruptions. And what we can see here is the longer the waiting time, the more extreme the eruptions are. We can also see that there's actually some clustering going on. We're not going to explore that in today's analysis. That's analysis for another day. Of course, in this particular case, simple linear regression is simply a matter of compute our linear model, and we can see what that looks like. Of course, we can also easily add our line to the graph thusly, and we see our least squares lie in this particular case. Now let's compute those coefficients, that negative 1.87 and that 0 0.075 using the matrix algebra methods. So first I want to copy the vectors out of the data frame into matrix objects so it can more easily perform matrix operations on it. So the weighting matrix, or the weight vector rather, uh, isn't quite our model matrix yet. We have to add that column of ones in order to get the intercept term. So how do we do that? We need the length of weight and a column that says rep is repeat the constant one. How many times? The number of times it is the length of the weight vector. So the C bind function will bind together the two columns and we can just take a look at our X matrix looks thus. So let's store x prime x into our transpose of x times our x matrix. Now remember, that's going to be just 2 by 2. We have one regressor plus our constant term. So in this case, k is 1, and so p is 2. And we have our x prime x inverse. Of course, what we want is actually the inverse matrix of that, which is simply solve And there's that vector. Now if we want to, we can test we should get something like the identity matrix, and sure enough, we do. Of course, to compute the actual coefficients, x prime x inverse times the transpose of x times erupt, which is our y variable. And there we have our coefficients negative 1.87 and 0 0.0756, which as we saw before was in fact the 
coefficients from our simple linear regression. We may also want to take a look at our hat matrix. Remember that the hat matrix is x times x prime x inverse times x prime. That gets us, when multiplied by y, that gets us the predicted values. And the reason to look at that is I wanted to explore the idempotency of this matrix. Remember that an idempotent matrix, when multiplied by itself, gives you that. Now, this hat matrix is 272 by 272, so I'm not going to show the whole matrix. Rather than encumber my screen with all of those digits, how am I going to confirm that the hat matrix is in fact idempotent? Well, if I take hat times hat, the conjecture of idempotency is that that should be in fact the hat matrix. So let's subtract the hat matrix from that. Everything here is 272 by 272. So how can I confirm that that is in fact those two are equal? If that's the zero matrix, then I've confirmed the idempotency of the hat matrix in this particular case. Well, to do that, let's just add up the absolute values of the coefficients. So now we're taking the sum of the absolute value of the matrix that is hat times hat minus hat. And sure enough, what do we get? on the order of 10 to the minus 13. So we've confirmed that the hat matrix is idempotent while we've done some other things and gotten a nice introduction to doing matrix operations in R.